welcome to today's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, I'm on my laptop today, so apologies if the quality is not quite up to scratch. I'm going to take a look at the Killer Sudoku, uh, deadly rated from the Times. Uh, just a reminder, if you like the channel, if you like what you're seeing, please do subscribe. Um, please tell your friends about us. We're trying to get our subscribers up at the moment, so any help would be most appreciated. With that, let's launch the puzzle. Assuming the internet works, which it's trying not to. Okay, here we go. All right, so what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to pause the video quickly while I fill in, um, you know, some of the given numbers. You can see this four, for example, has to be one and three. Um, this twenty-four and three has to be seven, eight, nine. I'm just going to do carry on with that and then we'll unpause. Okay, so there you can see there are. A few given boxes um, with the two ten boxes in four cells being perhaps the most uh, comprehensive. Um, now, where would I go from here? Probably look at this box initially. So we know any individual box in this puzzle must sum to 45 because it'll contain all of the numbers 1 to 9 exactly once each. And there we've got 27 in the box entirely already. So we know that these five cells here have to sum to 18. Now, these five cells sum to 18. We know these two cells must sum to 6 because we've got a 10 box and a 14 box here. Um, so we can immediately eliminate the 3 here. And we're left with, uh, we're left with a 2, 4, 5 as an option here. But I think we should use this logic a bit further. If we know these two boxes add to 6, we can tell something about the value of these three boxes here. Because we know we have 6 plus 8 is 14, plus 29 is 43, plus 9 is 52. So we know that these three cells here have to add to 7 in order that this bottom right hand box here sums to 45. Now that is actually helpful because 7 in 3 cells all in the same row has obviously got to be 1, 2, 4. So we can write 1, 2, 4 in. We could do if the computer worked. Uh, oh goodness. Which actually allows us to write in our first number over here. This now has to be a 3. And we can, of course, extend this logic even further now around the puzzle. So now looking at this 3x3 three three box, we've got 7 in these three cells and a 21. So that's 28. So we know these two cells have to sum to 17. And there's only one way that can happen. That's got to be an 8 and a 9. Um, so we should write that in. And now we know this 21 is going to be made up of 3, 5, 6 and 7, which hopefully if you... Um, Add them up, will sum to 21. Somewhat unusually, I'd probably try and take this logic even further around the puzzle. So you remember we started in this box, and then we've moved to this box, now this box. Well, I think we can go further. We can actually ask ourselves questions, firstly, about this box, and then secondly, even about this box, just, just from this initial logic that we did down here. So let's ask ourselves the question, what happens if this is a 9? This is a 9, we know these three cells here have to sum to 12. And we know these two boxes here sum to 43. There are 20 box and a 23 box. So those three boxes altogether would sum to 55, which would mean that these two cells would have to add to 10. Now 10 in and of itself isn't particularly useful in two cells, but you can see if we have 10 here plus 19 is 29, plus 8 is 37. This box would have to be an 8. And we can use the same logic, obviously. If this was an 8 here, we work it round, you'd find this had to be a 7. So still not quite enough to crack the puzzle, but we're starting to make more progress. 
And what I'd probably do now is I'd look at this seven box. This seven box looks quite restricted. We've already got a six in the column. So we know we're either looking at two, five, which I think could be, could work either way around by the looks of it. Or three, four. Well, th this can't be a three and this can't be a three. So in fact, this is definitely a two, five, uh, in some order. And you can see, if you look at row three of the grid, um, if we were to sum the 7 and the 26, we get 33, and the 8 is 41, and the 21 is 62. Now we know that row 3 of the grid, or indeed any row of the grid, is going to sum to 45. So we know that the, the cells that are sticking out, if you like, in the boxes we've just summed, these three cells that I'm highlighting now, these three cells have got to sum to 17 in order to ensure that this, this row works. Now, we've actually limited the value of two of these cells already, so we can probably also, we well, can limit it, limit the value of this, this cell too. So let's just ask ourselves the question, if this was an eight and this was a two, then this would be a seven, that looks possible. Uh, eight, five, this would be a four, also possible. Um, 9, 2, this would have to be a 6, and 9, 5, this would be a 3. So that's frustrating again. One of those logical steps that you sort of feel you have to go through just in case it's going to give you a number, but in this case it hasn't. And what we should do now, I think, is use Sudoku logic. So you can see we've locked a 1 into one of these two cells. Let's just scan down and see what that does to where we can position a 1 this cell. You can see because of this, this 12 box here that obviously can't contain a 1 and all of the other positions we've actually isolated the value of. So in fact this has to be a 1. Uh, and let's continue down here. Okay, So that means there's a 1 in one of these two positions here. Let's note that. And you can see that actually the other number here has to be a 3. Uh, by the same Sudoku logic. So let's just put have a 1 and a 3 here in a 20 box. So the other two cells have to sum to 16, which means they must be 7 and 9. Means this isn't a 9 here. And interestingly, this 11 box now is forced because we know it can't be a 2, 9, it can't be a 3, 8, and it can't be a 4, 7. So it has to be a 5 and a 6. Let's write that in too, because that's going to have a couple of useful consequences. The first thing is this can't be a 5. Now, if this can't be a 5, this can't be a 1. So we actually limit these two cells to being 2 and 4, which means we can fill this cell in with a 1 here. Very obviously restricts the value of this cell. In fact, it restricts it completely because if this was a 4, then this would have to be a 4 as well, which is not possible. So this would have to be a 6, this has to be a 2, this has to be a 4. And then going back over here, you can see that this cell now has to be 8. I should fill that in too. We're left with 4, 7 to place in column 1. And that's very useful because you can see immediately 4 and 7 add to 11. So we're looking for these two cells to add to 13. But we've already removed the possibility of the 4, 9 and the 6, 7. Um, so this can only be 5, 8. Which actually allows us now to fill in this 11 box down here. Six and we've got a two and a four into these two positions. Uh, it's also helpful as it happens because two and four obviously sum to six. That means these two cells have to sum to twelve, but we've already removed the possibility of a three nine and a four eight. So this has to be 
five seven in some order and you can see this five is checking this cell here so in fact this is a seven and this is a five like that which allows us to make more progress down here too you can see by simple Sudoku logic now the nine in column two in this three by three box can only go in this position so let's fill that in And in column three, we've got, oh dear, what's that doing? No, I don't want to do that Not later. Um, uh, one, two, three, four, five. We've got to place six and eight into these positions here. Well, this can't be a six because that would force that to be a six. So this must be an eight. This must be a four. Therefore, this must be a six. And this must be a two. So we're really starting to make quite a lot of progress with the puzzle. Um, yeah, and I'll be surprised if it if it holds out much longer. Um, so let's carry on. We've got 15 here, so we know these two have to sum to 11. So 8, 3 is the only way that can work. This has to be an 8. Now be a nine. Therefore, this has to be a seven. And that resolves this nine six combination here. We have to still put an eight into this row, so that must be there. Remove seven as a possibility here. And we can remove, uh, can't remove anything else, but we can see we've got to place three, five, six in this row in some order. And three and five, this can't take a three or a five. So this has to, in fact, be a six. Um, again, that allows us to remove the six from here, which means we can remove the five from here. And now we know that these, this is one and two, obviously. Oh, not that, not that cell, this, this cell here. It's all looking good as well. I always like to just double check. So this is 17. It's still working in terms of the sum total there. So it looks like, um, it looks like what we've done here is right. Simple Sudoku logic. This has to be an eight. Uh, that means that this cell has to be a two and a four because we need the 14 box to work. Uh, let's just take a scan along row 9 now you can see we have an 11 box a 14 box and an 8 box so that's 22 33 so these two cells have to sum to 12 well that's only possible if this is a 3 1 9 which means this has to be 1 and 7 in some order Okay, and we've still got five, six, seven to place in here. So again, that has to be the five. This has to be the seven. And this has to be the six. Okay, so now we can just eliminate the two and four from these two positions here. And the one and the three from here. So now we're looking at three, eight into these two positions. And that means I think we're looking at what are we looking at? Five nine? Yeah. There's a few ways of making reasonably quick progress from now. Uh, you can see in column four we need to place a one and a two, so let's just do that. And then you can use the trick with the, the sort of X wing of ones here. So we have a uh, a one in one of these two positions and a one in one of these two positions. So whichever way round these two ones go, either on this diagonal or this diagonal, there won't be any other ones in rows one and two. So that means that the one in this box here must be in one of these three positions. 
And in fact, because of this one here, it must be in one of these two positions. Then we look at the 21 box. We've already got a 9 and a 1 in there. Don't know where the 1 is yet, but we know it's in there somewhere. So that's 10. So we know that the other uh, two numbers in this 21 will have to sum to 11. But it can't be 2, 9. It can't be 3, 8. And it can't be 5, 6. So that little bit of logic there has allowed us to totally resolve, if you like, this 21 box, which in turn means that this 8 box has to be 3, 5, and therefore this is a 3 and this is a 5. And then you can see the 3 scanning down, and resolving a number of issues with columns 5 and 6. Almost all of the issues with columns 5 and 6. Looking at 7, 9, these two positions. And 4, 6 into these two positions. In fact, we can use simple Sudoku logic again in a couple of places around. That's got to be a 2. This has got to be a 4. And because of the 2, 4 duo here, this actually is going to have to be the 7 here. Like so. Which, because of the 4 here, actually allows us to resolve this entirely. Scanning down, we can see a 1 here and a 7 here. Scanning up. I mean, the puzzle's obviously solved now. It's simply a matter of um, you know, filling it in, if you like. And we might as well do that. We've got this far. You can see actually this can't be a 6, although we know the 6 is in one of these two positions. If this was a 6, this would take a 4, and this cell here would have to be a 10. That's not possible. So this is a 6. That means this must be a 6, and this must be a 4. Resolves this 4 7 combination. Everything's flowing reasonably quickly now. You see this 20 and 6 here. These two cells have to sum to 14. But we can't use 6 and 8 because we already have 6 in the box. So this must be 5, 9. And that can only go this way round. Which again scans down and resolves everything in the um, in columns 8 and 9. This be resolvable. Okay, so what do we need? We need a 2 and an 8 into these two positions. Um, now if this is 2 and 8, that's 10, plus this 10, this must be the 3, which resolves everything over here. And that is how you do the deadly killer Sudoku. Thanks for watching, and see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic.